G'day there, this is Sarah and Matt from Amateur Filmies, and today we'll be taking you through our Umbrella Entertainment Collection. We've got about 16 titles to show you, so sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy. So you'd probably think that because we're from Australia that our Umbrella Entertainment you know, collection would be really, really big, but it's actually not the case. Um, they are a really good company though, and they're probably the most well-known Blu-ray distributor company in Australia, but they have some competition now with in-print films, which we're yet to buy anything from. But yeah, we're, they're a really good company and they have a lot of really good releases, so we'll get stuck right into it. First release we have is our only DVD release, and that is Drop Dead Gorgeous. Funny little backstory to this one, we actually we actually found it when we were at Mardi Gras one year and we'd finished like watching the parade and so we decided to check out this record shop and I found this movie and I hadn't seen it in years and I remember loving it as a kid. It is a very, very bleak sort of black comedy starring Kirsten Dunst and it's about a small town beauty pageant and the lengths that a few girls would go to to sort of win that title of beauty queen if that makes sense and it's it's extremely dark and i remember it terrifying me as a kid because there was a lot of pretty dark themes in it, a lot of treachery and murder so yeah definitely highly recommend this one especially if you're into you know black comedies next up we have the classic patrick and you'll probably notice straight away that the ratings logo is different. That's because we actually picked this one up when we were in uh, New Zealand in about 2017. And um, yeah, Umbrella Entertainment, they most of their releases are sold in both Australia and New Zealand. So that's where we picked it up. But I'm really glad to have this edition in particular because as you can see, it's the 35th anniversary. And it comes with a bunch of art cards as well. I'm not actually sure this edition might actually be rare. I need to double check that. But to my knowledge, actually... Um, Severin just recently announced the sequel to this as well. I think it's called Patrick Lives Again or something like that. So I'll definitely be checking that out. Although we are a bit wary of ordering from Severin at the moment because three months later, we're still waiting for our sale package to arrive. But that's a whole other Unbelievable. issue. Unbelievable. Yeah, but in the meantime, we're happy to have this one. We have the 1990s remake of Night of the Living Dead by Tom Savini. I really love this remake. I think it's a really strong remake and it just, it builds on... On the original without taking away from it if that makes sense the biggest thing i'd say about this remake is the character of barbara has been improved immensely instead of being this sort of catatonic sort of helpless woman she's like her own woman she takes control of situations and she sort of fights back a little bit more mm -hmm. and i believe the actress that played her is actually a stunt woman so it sort of makes sense that she was part of those action scenes and yeah i loved that tom savini sort of created that character of Barbara. Hmm. This next film is Cat's Eye. So this is a horror anthology film and there are three segments within it. Uh, my understanding is that the first two segments are adapted from Stephen King's short stories and the third segment is like a, an original creation. On the whole, I wasn't actually very impressed with this one as a film. I was really disappointed as well because, you know, I, I really love Stephen King and, you know, regardless of the quality of his adaptations, I'm going to watch the film the film versions of his books because I just love him so much. And yeah, this one just wasn't, very, wasn't scary enough, unfortunately. The link with the cat, the cat is the thing that ties the three stories together and it felt very fillerish. It didn't actually feel essential to the plot. But yeah, I don't know. It's not the worst film out there, just pretty lackluster in my opinion. And then we have Death Ship. Now we've got to be honest about this one. We have not seen it, even though we also bought this one in New Zealand. So that's <laughs> a bit shameful of us. Uh, but what we do know about it is that it is an 80s film about a ship that is filled with sort of Nazi sort of ghosts, if that makes sense. And the plot line sort of reminds me a lot of... Um, what was that Nazi zombie film? Shockwaves. Shockwaves. But it does star George Kennedy. And I don't mind him in a horror role. I think he was in Creepshow too, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of like the <laughs> idea of like Nazi horror stuff. So I don't know. It's It's been one that I've been wanting to watch for clearly a couple of years now. <laughs> I'm ashamed to say. So next up, we have a little hidden gem. I don't think you probably have heard of this movie You probably before. haven't heard about it. Yeah, but um, it's called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And this is the 40th anniversary edition, I believe. But yeah, obviously don't need to say much about this one. It's an absolute classic. And every time I watch this movie, I end up liking it a little bit more. 
We probably will end up selling this edition actually because we may or may not be getting a very special edition of the first movie. We're not sure yet. But um, regardless, it's a staple in any horror collector's um, collection and it is just an amazing film. And I really like, the, like a lot of the sequels as well, especially the second one, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Um, just an excellent franchise and I really do want to actually rewatch them all again sometime soon because they're just that great. We have Idle Hands. Now, I know this is sealed, but this is a movie that I've seen millions of times in my childhood. I absolutely love this film. I think it's one of the best horror comedies, but I might be a bit biased because I grew up with it. But the thing about this film is that it includes a cameo by The Offspring. Um, it has Devin Sawyer. It has Jessica Alba. So it's like classic late 90s, how early do, 2000s. How do you not mention Seth Green? Seth Green, of course. I actually watched this only for the first time like a few months ago at Sarah's insistence because I know that, as she's literally just said, she grew up loving this movie and I've known about it for quite a while and, you know, so it was one of the first movies Sarah brought up to me when we first started dating and <laughs> I only just got around to watching it and I absolutely loved it as well. It's definitely got such rewatchability and great to watch in a group especially i loved watching it with sarah and her siblings it was just such a great time so if you haven't watched this one i highly recommend it it's like an amazing 90s horror comedy a staple of the 90s i would say as a child this movie definitely terrified me and it still terrifies me to this day and i never thought i would say that about a movie about a haunted hand but there is a scene where the hand shaves its own fingers in like through a pencil sharpener mm. and it is just terrifying i <laughs> I can't explain it, it's just... What's scarier, the hand in Idle Hands or the hand in Evil Dead 2? The hand in Idle Hands, absolutely. <laughs> so this next movie is The Last Emperor. Now this one is also still sealed because I am yet to check this one out, but we actually got this movie for free. Um, Umbrella Entertainment is such a nice company. <laughs> I bought a movie directly from their website. I can't remember what it actually was, but they, when, I, when the package arrived, I opened it up and they included this one as a freebie and they said thank you for... You know, thank you for your purchase. We hope you enjoy our gift. And even though I haven't watched it, I still, I, I'm always going to enjoy a free Blu-ray. So really glad to have this in the collection. And I've heard amazing things about this one. Um, I, th I always get it mixed up with Martin Scorsese's. Is it Kundun? Or K yeah, I don't know how to pronounce Kundun, it, sorry. I think. Yeah, but um, I've always, I haven't seen that one either. But yeah, I know <laughs> this one's supposed to be excellent. If you've seen this one, let me know what you think. Because yeah, nothing like a good free Blu-ray. And especially when the movie is supposed to be great too. And we have You Were Never Really Here. So we purchased this after listening to an Arrow Video podcast suggesting that this was the best movie of 2018 or 2019 or what, like whatever year it came out. And so we thought, okay, it must be pretty decent. It's got Joaquin Phoenix in it and he's a fantastic actor. We checked it out the, I mean, a few nights, a few months ago now and absolutely loved it. Highly recommend it. It is very dark and very hard hitting, but it just is so satisfying to watch as well mm. um even though like it does deal with some pretty dark themes for sure and there's a particular scene in a river that sort of it, it's like very um, emotionally swelling mm. if that makes sense <laughs> yeah and like just a brilliant performance by joaquin phoenix as well and i think a really good pairing in my opinion would probably be uh blue ruin as well yes. i think they're both um they, they pair really well together but yeah, I'm really glad that we got around to watching this one because yeah, we'd heard such great things and it, it ended up being a really good movie. So I'll actually show these next two together because they're obviously <laughs> related. Um, the first one here is Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. And the second one is Rob Zombie's The Devil's Rejects. Really glad to have these in the collection. Um, I really like both of these movies uh, for different reasons. I think The Devil's Rejects, in my opinion, is the superior film, but I think House of the Thousand Corpses definitely has a really unique style that really defines Rob Zombie's directing style, I think. And yeah, they're both really good. They, have, they obviously have their own, have their flaws, um, but you know, I think that we, we've talked about Rob Zombie in the past. Like, I, I find him interesting as a director, and if he does a movie, I'm going to check it out. So. Um, that being said, we are still yet to watch Three from Hell, but we are excited to watch that because I'm sure you like both of these as well, don't you? I, I do like them, and I think they're decent horror movies. The only thing I would say um, is that Sherry Moon Zombie, I don't know mm. whether I like her as an actress or her, her particular character within, this fi within these films is very annoying. Yeah, very grating. I don't know how I feel about her as an actress either, but... The movies overall, I think, are pretty good. Absolutely, especially House of a Thousand Corpses for me. Hmm. I love that 
the, the straight up horror of it. It's funny, we actually got Sarah's mum to check out House of a Thousand Corpses. She sat through the whole <laughs> oh, thing. She unsur- walked in and just watched it with us. I was so shocked. Yeah, and if, I mean, it might, it, if you know Sarah's mum, that is a pretty shocking thing. Yeah. She, these are definitely not to her taste. But yeah, she she seemed to enjoy it at the time. I don't sort know. of. <laughs> I think she was silently judging us. Yeah. We have Orca, the killer whale. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love the cover of this. It looks so vintage. And I'm personally not one to pass up a good sea creature movie. Uh, I know that Scream Factory is actually releasing an, an so edition. It's already out. Yeah. Oh, it's already out. But yeah, I haven't, don't know a whole lot about this movie, but I do know it is about an orca who is seeking revenge for the death of his pregnant mate. And he, I think he attacks um, a, a captain of a, like of a, you know, sea vessel. I believe that's Richard Harris. Yeah. Know, he's a pretty revered actor. So well, he's Dumbledore. He's Dumbledore, or the original Dumbledore. So I, I do have high hopes for this movie, but I'm also confused as to how a, an orca can get a taste for revenge. I'm not sure whether they're com- like you know capable of such complex emotions. <laughs> we'll give the movie the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's a lot of fun. And what I was going to say is, I'm, I'm really interested to see how the effects go because mm. I know that obviously Jaws is sort of the the benchmark for this special is. effects of that time. Yeah. I'm interested to see whether this lives up to it, if, mm. if this stands up. Yeah, let us know what you think about this movie if you've seen it, because it it takes all the boxes for us as far as <laughs> what we like to watch, so we're excited to check it out. Next up, we have the film Color Out of Space. Now, this film's directed by Richard Stanley and stars Nicolas Cage. I'm sure a lot of you have actually heard of this movie, because it is a relatively new one. I think it came out maybe last year. And I, I really, really enjoyed this movie. It was such a, just a wild ride. And I really like uh, Richard Stanley as a person. Like, I've watched a couple of interviews with him since watching this one. And he just seems like such a crazy type of person, like tra- crazy yes, character. Yeah, and like, I he, he directed a, a movie called Hardware, which I've been wanting to watch for a really long time now. And this was the movie that he made, like he came out of retirement to make this movie. And if I'm not mistaken, because this is a HP Lovecraft adaptation, I believe he has another two Lovecraftian adaptations coming in the next however many years. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I am <laughs> down to watch those because just his approach to adapting this story I thought was brilliant. And Nicolas Cage always brings something crazy and fresh to the table with his acting performance. And he, it, this was no letdown in that department either. Um, as you can imagine, the colours in this were absolutely gorgeous, and just the climax of the film was just so whacked and amazing. Mm-hmm. Visual, visually, just an incredible film as well. I can understand why some people might not like this movie. I can, it's, I think, it might be a little bit divisive on a couple of different fronts, but on the whole, as a big fan of cosmic horror and and Nicolas Cage, <laughs> this one is just a great movie. I highly recommend it for sure. Usually, films of this sort of cosmic horror genre are a little too surreal and a little too artsy for my liking but this one felt accessible enough that it was yeah obviously it had that surreal aspect to it but it also felt like it had a pretty coherent storyline some surreal horror movies you're left sitting in your seat at times during the movie thinking what the hell is even going on at this point but you could i feel like you could follow it from start to end even though it does pose some pretty big questions that you try and figure out on your own you sort of just accept i mean that's the thing with this genre as well you sort of just accept the craziness <laughs> yeah the idea is you accept what is being shown on screen otherwise if you try and break it down too much then you're just going to get lost because the whole point of cosmic horror is that it's about the unfathomable unfathomable so yeah but this one i think is a pretty accessible cosmic horror film i would agree now this is one of the art covers i absolutely love and this film is probably like, it's just like textbook Australian 70s exploitation. And I know that's a very, <laughs> that's a very niche genre. Ozploitation, sorry. I, I can't help but compare it to the movie Boar, which we sort of watched in a similar, like in a similar time. I personally preferred Boar, even though it's definitely not as a quality of a movie. But this one definitely had its charms, especially there's a scene within a factory where this this um, man's trying to look for his girlfriend who's got who's been taken by the Razorback, and it sort of felt almost Mad Max esque. Mm. Would you agree? Yeah, there's, there's a, something to the aesthetic of this film, like the way it was shot, the setting, like the setting in particular. I, I do I understand what you mean with the reference to Mad Max. It does feel kind of I don't even I don't want to get, be too descriptive. Like I, I know exactly what you mean. It's hard to articulate why, but wouldn't be a bad one to watch alongside Mad Max, really. The creature itself, the Razorback, 
is so menacing. And I'm, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with sort of Australian, like, bush pigs and boars. They are actually very, very dangerous. <laughs> you know, they're, they're terrifying. I mean, probably not as scary as this, but yeah, hmm. very terrifying imagery. I agree with everything you said, except the fact that you think boar is better. I think most people would probably get on to you about that. I think Razorback's definitely the better movie, but yeah, really, really fun movie overall. This next one is The Blob, with absolutely beautiful packaging. This is definitely my favourite uh, release cover-wise, artwork-wise, in, in our entire Umbrella collection. And this particular edition is absolutely fantastic because it includes the 1980s remake of The Blob, which a lot of you probably own through Screen Factory as well. Uh, but it also includes the original The Blob from the 50s and even the standard, edition, uh, standard definition version of Son of Blob. Um, which, so it's just a really, really great package. You get three films in this, plus a bunch of special features. I'm not sure if this like particular edition is limited or you know is unavailable, but if, if you don't own any of those movies, this is a great edition to pick up. I really, really liked the 80s um, remake of The Blob. I thought it was a great 80s horror film. Uh, I don't think you've watched it, have you? None of them. <laughs> yeah, um, I think you'd really like the 80s version. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really fun time, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree. But yeah, great, great addition to own. And as I said, I highly recommend you pick up this particular one because get a lot of bang for your buck. <laughs> we have Cargo. I believe I've spoken about this movie a few times. And I think it was part of our 500 subscriber giveaway as well. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love this movie. I, as soon as it came out at the cinemas, I made, I dragged Matt to the cinemas to go watch it. It's definitely not my favorite zombie film, but it is a really quality Australian zombie film. And it features Martin Freeman as well. And it has some really good sort of social message about sort of like caring for the land, like a bit of environmentalism. And it also... It also is one of the few film, modern films that touches on Aboriginal culture, and I've never seen that in a horror film, at least. I know that it has been used in horror films. Yeah, I'm but sure they're out there, but like as far as what we've watched yeah, recently, yeah. Absolutely. I've never seen it be used, and so, yeah, I thought it was really lovely, and yeah, highly recommended this film if you haven't seen it, and this edition is really good as well. Um, I will, will admit the cover is a bit BB, a bit basic. <laughs> But yeah, you could you could do a lot worse. This this film is fantastic. There are plenty of other really amazing releases by Umbrella Entertainment that we don't own. In particular, Dark Age is one that I really want to own. Um, that that is actually a crocodile movie with John Jarrett in it, a young John Jarrett. So can't wait to watch that one. And there is also a fantastic release of Body Melt, and we have that on Vinegar Syndrome. Body Melt itself is not the most quality film. I've seen bits and pieces of it, but... I really like it. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of... I, I want to compare it to sort of street trash. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can see sense. the connection there. But I, I, I do recommend you actually look into Umbrella Entertainment's catalogue because they have a, a lot of different releases and a lot of fantastic movies. And I just want to stress as well, like... We do, we do really think it is important to support labels and stuff. And I don't, just because we own a, a lot of their releases through other companies like Arrow and stuff, doesn't mean we don't value Umbrella Entertainment just as much. Like they have a lot of quality releases. And yeah, I just wanted to mention that because we, you know, we've been asked about it in the past. Why, you know, if, it, if there's a movie released through Umbrella and also another company, why don't we get it through Umbrella? And sometimes, it's, as I said, it's just situational a lot of Absolutely. the time. Like, you know, if Arrow Video is running a really cheap sale and there's a movie on there that I've been wanting, so I'll probably just pick it up from there. It really depends. It really boils down to usually an availability and a money thing. It's not about us not liking Umbrella. We, we think they're a great company. But yeah, aside from all that, yeah, we really love them as a company. And we, as I said, we recommend you check them out for sure. And, you know, thanks again for watching the video. We hope that you've liked seeing our collection. Um, recommend us some films based on these ones, yes, other please. Umbrella <laughs> specific releases. Yeah, we always love hearing from you guys in the comments. So appreciate it. Um, thank you for watching. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video.